Now in the first part of this question then, we've got to write down sine 2x in terms of sine x and cos x. And you should know this identity, you've got to learn it, and it is identical to 2 sine x cos x. You could write 2 cos x sine x, it obviously doesn't matter which way around you write it, but for one mark, there you go, that's what we have. Now, for part B, what we've got to do is solve the equation cosec x minus 8 cos x equals 0 and give our solutions for x between naught and pi. Now, there's got to be obviously some connection here with what we did up here. I can't see it for the moment, but um, what we've got to do is obviously get this in terms of sines and cosines, I would have thought. So 1 over cosec x, well, that's going to be 1 over sine x. So we'll just mark that in as 1 over sine x. I'll leave that alone, minus 8 cos x, and that equals 0. Now we've got a fractional equation here, and I'd want to remove this fraction, the sine x here, so I'm going to multiply both sides by sine x, and that's going to give me 1 here, then we're going to have the minus 8 sine x cos x, minus 8 sine x cos x, and then 0 times sine x is obviously 0. Okay, right, well, we can see now where this is fitting in to the picture, I hope. You can see that we've got 2 sine x cos x is the same as sine 2x. Now, if we were to multiply this by 4, we'd have 8 sine x cos x, and that would be the same as 4 times sine 2x. Look, I'll just show you what we could do here is we could do 1 minus and then just simply write 4 times 2 sine x cos x. And that's where the part above is obviously featuring because 2 sine x cos x was identical to sine 2x. So we can write sine 2x in here. So we have 1 minus 4 times sine 2x equals the 0. If I rearrange this, add 4 sine 2x to both sides and then divide by 4, what we end up with is sine 2x equals 1 quarter. Now, at this point, what we want to do is take the inverse sine to both sides, so we end up with 2x equals the inverse sine of a quarter. Now, when I'm solving questions like this, what I normally do is use the quadrant method. Some of you out there might uh, do it by a graphical method. What I'll do is do both methods for you. Okay? Um, we'll start with the quadrant method. And if you're unfamiliar with the quadrant method, there's a link um, at the bottom of this video if you're looking at it on my website. Okay? Now, if we're doing the quadrant method, remember this is zero zero radians in this case because we're dealing with radians and uh, we turn in an anti-clockwise direction and sine is positive we've got a positive value here quarter so sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant so draw two lines equally inclined then to the horizontal here marking that those two angles are exactly the same what angles do we want? Well, we're interested in 2x, not the angle x at the moment. Okay, So we've got to adjust this range. So if we're looking at the range for 2x, let's just put this in red here, what we need to do is times each of these intervals here by 2. So 2 times 0 is 0. Then we have 2 times x is 2x and 2 times pi is 2 pi. So we have a new range for the angle 2x between 0 and 2 pi. OK, so let's put those angles on in here. We start from here. We want this one. This is a possible 2x. Start back from 0 again. Turn anti-clockwise. And we can go to this next blue line here. And this is another possible 2x. These two angles, the red one and the green one, 
are within this range 0 to 2 pi. So that's fine. If I was using my calculator, what I would do now is take the inverse sine of a quarter. Make sure your calculator is in radians mode, so we therefore have 2x equals, and if you inverse sine this in radians mode, you should find you get 0.25268 and so on. Okay, let's put a comma there. That's in radians. And that refers to this red 2x here. Okay, that angle in here, that little blue one there, okay, is 0.25268 radians. Now, we need to get the green 2x. Well, we know that this little blue one in here is also 0.25268 because we mark them in as being the same. We know that to go all the way around to here is pi radians. So therefore, to get the green one, all I need to do is do pi take away the 0.25268. And if you do that, you're going to find you get 2.8889 and so on. Okay, well this is radians. We need to divide each of these by 2 to get what x is now. So therefore, x is going to be 0.12634 and if I divide this by 2 you get 1.444 and so on. Okay, We've got to give x to two decimal places so x is going to be equal to 0.13 for the first one and that's in radians. You can either write the word radians or you could use the symbol c if you like. Okay. 0.13 radians and the other one is 1.44 radians and both of these okay are to two decimal places 2dp. Now I did say that we could do a graphical solution and if you're doing a graphical solution here I would start by drawing the graph okay let's have a y-axis there I'm not going to call this x, I'm just going to call it theta, because if we drew the graph of y equals sine theta, you should know that it starts from 0, goes up to 1 at 90 degrees, or in this case within radians, that's pi upon 2 radians, down to uh, 0 again at 180 degrees, or pi radians, and then to minus 1 at 270, or 3 pi upon 2 radians, and back home to 0 at 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So that's naught pi upon 2 pi 3 pi upon 2 and 2 pi. Okay? And if you're doing a graphical method you've got sine 2x equals a quarter inverse sine it on your calculator in radians and you get 0.25268. That means that if you were to look across here at a quarter, let's just say there, you get this value down here, and by the symmetry, you can go across there, down there, and those that angle there, okay, in radians, let's just mark it in, it's a bit cramped, I hope you can see that, okay, is 0.25268, and so on. And this one will be pi minus the 0.25268. Okay, that will give us our second value, the one here, 2.8889 and so on. Alright, so uh, as I say, I always prefer the quadrant method as opposed to the graphical method, but there you go. Right, okay, well that brings us to the end of this question. I hope uh, that's been of some use to you.